Hi friends, welcome to Code Shana and in this video we are going to take a look at how to install Beautiful Soup in your system. Alright, so if you're working with web scraping that you might have heard about Beautiful Soup. It is one of the great libraries to scrape elements from the web and then use them well according to your project. So let's just get started. Alright, I'm going to open my command prompt as I always do. Alright, now let's navigate to our desktop. And now let's make a directory so this one will be bs4 and then example all right we don't want to save the folder as bs4 because pip installation will get confused what do we need to do so this is the command actually now uh, we are going to create a virtual environment in our folder if you don't know how to do that please take a look in the description below i have a video there regarding virtual environment so let's press enter wonderful all right now let's activate our virtual environment great now since we are in our virtual environment i'm going to first install beautiful soup now you might think that it would be as easy as typing beautiful soup but no the command is not that it is actually bs4 so let's wait a while till that's done all right great so now let's open our command all right so now let's open our code editor great now let's open the folder that we have just created so in our desktop we had created ps4 underscore example select that folder and now i'm going to quickly show you a script to scrape some elements from the web now let's create our file first so the file name should not be bs4 just like the folder it should not be bs4 so let's just say bs4 underscore x dot pi great so now our first job is to import that bs4 module and import the beautiful soup from that bs4 module all right so from bs4 import beautiful soup just like that and now since typing that name is going to be a little bit time consuming we are going to import it as soup which is currently the convention now we are also going to you know look at the URL we are going to import URL open and request classes from you know URL lib dot request so let's do that from URL lib dot request import url open dot and then request so we have imported both of these functions now if you have worked with some examples of web scraping you already know that when we scrape some elements from the web we actually send a fake user agent information from our computer all right so that the website knows that this particular browser is accessing the content so that they don't block us right away but make the request too much and they will block your current user agent so for now let's create a user agent variable and no it does not have to be all caps so i'm going to create a user agent for mozilla and please bear with me as i create this because this line can get a little long don't worry i'm going to skip ahead all right so as you can see we have this user agent created it will tell the system that we are accessing it via mozilla all right uh, well firefox to be exact with a version number of 65 which is really old anyways it is going to work for this example so let's carry on now we're going to create a headers variable we're going to make a request object using our url and our headers variable so let's do this let's create a user agent the first so user agent is going to be well the user agent we just defined above grave mistake there so that user and then agent all right now we are going to create a request variable which is to say we are going to make a request object using our request function which we have imported here so again bear with me here so request url is equal to the url which i am going to define in just a minute all right so headers is equal to headers which 
refers to this headers variable and these two parameters are actually inside this particular function all right these are arguments so we currently have headers all right we don't have url so now let's define a url and i'm going to take my own website https and then anniversary roses.in as the example all right so let's see what we have there now we're going to create an html object all right because we have to pass this html object inside the beautiful soup as an argument because after that it will give us all the information of that particular url in html format all right after that we can find elements using beautiful soups find method all right so let's continue html is equal to then url open which we have imported above we're going to pass in the request object that we have created and then read the content from it yes so now our html object is ready now we are going to create a beautiful soup object all of these are objects all right we are going to use the properties inside that object now you can name it page soup you can name it data container anything so I'm going to name it page soup is equal to and since we have imported beautiful soup as soup I'm going to write soup here and then we are going to just pass this HTML object right here and then we are going to tell how this particular object should be treated so it should be parsed as HTML so HTML dot parser all right now we can print out this particular object all right but if you do that your page is going to be filled with uh, so much content then it's not going to make any sense so let's do that you know why should it make sense let's use control back tick wonderful so now our environment is not active so let's activate our virtual environment here then python bs4 underscore ex.py so wonderful no errors there and our whole page the anniversary roses dot and page is currently within our eyes so the project is done take your break drink your coffee whatever but uh, does it make any sense nope let me actually show you the page so that it starts making a little bit of sense so that's anniversary roses dot in all right so it is my relationship love and uh, things like that website me and my wife are operating on it and we currently have a youtube channel of anniversary roses as well please check it out it is again a little bit of promotion that i'm doing via my programming channel all right so this is our page now what do i want to get from this particular page now what if i want to get all the titles of this blog post here now let's right click on it click inspect let's uh, just close this bottom one we don't need that so this particular title is currently embedded in h4 tag so if we get all the h4 tags i guess that will you know generate a list of all the block titles that i have on this particular page this home page so let's try that shall we so printing this page soup element it is not going to do us any good so just delete that and now we are going to create a containers variable and now inside page underscore soup object yes it is a beautiful soup object so beautiful access the find all method and now within this you can access any number of things but i want to access only the h4 tag so in you know double quotes or single quotes it's up to you just type h4 and it is going to find all the h4s in your page and once more if you print this one let's just do this print containers it did not type that all right so print containers let's just run this code see wonderful all right so it did give me all the data look at this this is all the data that you currently have which h4 tag but it is still not making any sense what if i want to know how many elements are there so this is a list right so we can loop through this list so how about we do that so for i in containers print i see that's easy it is so 
So let's uh, run this Python file. So one by one, it has successfully printed it, but it is also giving us the whole HTML thing. Yes, this is the HTML part of it. What if I only want to know the title and the title comes in text form. So all I need to do is type dot text. Let's run this code once more. And yes, there we go. And you can do all sorts of things here. Anyways, so this is how you scrape items from a web page using beautiful soup. And this is how you install beautiful soup via pip installation command. So if this video has been helpful to you please do subscribe to code Shana. and for anything related to python please contact me on my whatsapp or in the comment section below whatsapp link will be available in the description as well so i'll see you in the next one take care happy coding bye bye